G'day YouTube, 1MJ here, welcome back. Well, market cap, still around that $400 billion mark. Guay, so gas prices have come down so far, I can't believe that. 17 for gas at the moment, that is unbelievably cheap considering the 200, 300, it was that not, not that long ago at all. So that is great for anyone who's using Ethereum at the moment. Now, BTC dominance uh, still sitting around that 60%, and I do think this is going to increase. Uh, I think we're going to probably get up to around 65 maybe even possibly up to 75%. Uh, but once it hits that sort of all-time high, around 20,000, I think that'll start to come down. But look, there's no guarantees. It might not even get up there, but I am expecting at least 65% uh, BTC dominance in the very near future. Now we can see Bitcoin, it's just sitting under that $13,000 mark at the moment. So we're, we're not going to you know, get through that $13,800, sort of $14,000 you know, sort of overnight. There is going to be some hurdles and a weekend is one of those hurdles. So my thinking at the moment is that, again, Bitcoin slows down a little bit over the weekends, like traditional markets, because the traditional markets aren't trading over the weekends. This is just retail market now of a weekend, really, and some whales and things like that. Traditional markets, they got the weekend off. They're spending it with their families and, you know, doing what, you know, normal kind of people do on a weekend. So what I'm watching for is Monday. My thought process at the moment is I don't think we're going to see much sideways action from Bitcoin for a while. I think we are going to continue to just tick up and there's not going to be too many pullbacks. And we may just really pump up with our very minor pullbacks because I think a lot of institutional money is going to get into Bitcoin. And particularly, again, I've said it before, once we break that $13,800 mark. But if we don't really pump on Monday, then I think maybe this pulls back to around the $12,500 level. That's my gut feeling. So let's have a look at the BTC charts. So get rid of all this. So here we are, we broke through that 12 and a half thousand and we've confirmed that we're sort of staying up here for at least a little while. And now we got some sideways action, but that's because this is a weekend. So that's Friday, this is Saturday and we still got Sunday to go. Come Monday, I think this is going to move upwards. And if it doesn't, then I think it's going to move downwards. I know that's a little bit ambiguous, but I real I don't think we're going to travel sideways. I think the sideways movement for Bitcoin uh, is going to be null and void for a while. I think a number of institutions are going to start to pile in. And there's a reason for that. So we'll go over here. Mike Novogratz calls PayPal's Bitcoin news the shot heard around the world on Wall Street. And I do kind of agree with this. And there's a reason, there's a really good line in here. PayPal has 346 million accounts. He said, adding, they are the 30th biggest bank in the US. In deposits, and all of a sudden, every financial institution says, wait a minute, what am I doing? It's that old saying, no one wants to be first. Everyone's scared of being first. But once somebody does it, no one wants to be last. And there's been a number of companies that have come out now, big companies, you know, saying they're getting into Bitcoin. And again, PayPal's not really investing their money into Bitcoin. It's more they are, you know, providing a service for Bitcoin. But I think it's only a matter of time until they buy some Bitcoin themselves. But again, they are the 30th biggest bank in the US. All of a sudden, you know, they've got cryptocurrencies going watch the other banks do exactly the same. And again, then we got MicroStrategy investing, you know, $400 million, you know, $450 million into Bitcoin. You got Grayscale, they're still buying up hundreds of millions of dollars worth of cryptocurrencies, probably as we speak, you know, they just did another, I think $300 million on one day last week. And I think it was 1 billion in the seven days leading up to the 21st of October. So I think there's going to be massive money that is going to pour into uh, cryptocurrencies in general. I don't think it's just Bitcoin. I think Ethereum's going to move. I think some of uh, the DeFi projects are really going to move. Uh, and obviously Bitcoin. And look, there'll be a number of other ones that will move as well. But this is so true. They have 346 million accounts uh, and they are essentially a bank, a financial uh, institution. The other banks are not going to want to be the last. They, again, they were all too scared to really be the first, but now they're not going to want to be the last. I think Bitcoin is going to start to move uh, and start to move 
big time and that'll just be institutional buyers and they're not going to be silly they're not going to come out and just buy you know hundreds of millions in one big crack they're going to do exactly what micro strategy did but the thing is if there's a ton of uh, institutions doing that the price is just going to start to move fast regardless no matter what and that is what i believe is going to happen to bitcoin so again we come back over to these charts i think on monday this is going to start to move because the institutions, again, they've, they've got the weekend off. So it will slow down over a weekend. That's not to say there isn't uh, you know, institutions buying Bitcoin right now. It's just they're not doing it uh, via the traditional kind of channels, I guess, would be the best way. So on Monday, I am expecting to see Bitcoin do something big. And again, maybe it is we just break straight back down to around the you know, $12,500 level or we start seeing stuff like this. Again, it might just be a little bit, and then the day after, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more, bang, a big one, and then we travel sideways just for a very short time. Again, possibly over the next weekend, and I think this is going to repeat itself over and over and over again. And we're not too far off this $14,000 level, and once we crack that, it is gonna move fast. It is going to move very fast. I actually, you know, I predicted that we're going to, you know, once we get through here and confirm that we're through it and it's not a fake out that breaks above and then falls below, that we actually close, you know, one or two candles above this green line. I thought maybe we might reject off the 20,000. I don't think we're going to. I think we're going to absolutely blow through this 20,000. Once Bitcoin confirms that uh, it has cleared this 13,800, and again, we just rounded up to 14,000. Once it confirms that it's through there, that is going to be the key for all those institutions that are still sitting on the line and are still not sure. Again, they don't want to be the first and they won't be the first, but they don't want to be too early. And then, you know, if it all goes wrong, have everyone laugh at them. That's the way they'll be thinking. And look, that's a smart way to think uh, when it comes to investments sometimes. You know, if you're the first uh, and it doesn't work, people laugh at you. But if you're the first and it works, then everybody, you know, hails you as, you know, <laughs> just a real smart investor. So it's that double-edged sword and you really have to be careful uh, about where you want to sit in that. Look, for me, because I'm, in, uh, I'm an investor, I generally don't jump into things that don't have any track record. It's not that I never do it but I rarely do it. And if I do, I only put a tiny amount into it. I, I, I never put, again, you know, that whole saying, more than you can afford to lose. Bitcoin, I believe in it. It's been around for a long time, but I don't think it's going anywhere. And I think everything that's happening at the moment proves that, you know, mass adoption is occurring right now. Um, Ethereum, again, same thing. It's been around for a while. It's been tried and tested. Now, you know, we're still waiting on ETH 2.0 and there is news that maybe the... Uh, contracts for that are, are being pushed back a little bit uh, where you can send your ETH over and change it into ETH2 not the staking part that's still not available uh, there is I think I saw something on Twitter that it's been pushed back to November now so just the contracts where you could swap from uh, the ETH we have now over to 2.0 you know but we'll have to wait and see I'm still super bullish on Ethereum and I think it's going to be massive uh, and that's what I'm really looking out for at the moment is Monday because again, weekends, you know, a bit of up, a bit of down. And again, really this, down to this, even though it was just wicks, I would call that our pullback. I don't think Bitcoin is going to go any lower over the weekend. But come Monday, we're going to know what the move is and what the real sentiment of the market is. Do we have a bit of a pullback and come down to sort of 12,500? Or do we just start to keep doing this and we keep moving up more and more and more? And I just, I see this repeating. And as I said before, here was my trend line. I didn't see this trend line getting broken. This is completely invalid now. I can basically get rid of this. So I'll get rid of this one. I don't need this anymore. I don't think that will, come on, there we go. All right. This is the line. And I don't see this being broken anytime soon. And I, and I mean that anytime soon. Uh, I, I think this line will need to change and we'll probably need to start going more in an upwards direction like that because I don't see any major pullbacks happening anytime soon. I think anyone who sells Bitcoin at the moment, and even the whales I think would be clued on at the moment, that it's, it's a dangerous move for them to try and, you know, 
create panic so everyone panic sells their Bitcoin and then they buy it back cheaper because I think it's just going to be snapped up. And I think even the whales know right now that they are best to just hodl because if they do try and manipulate the market to buy it cheaper and it doesn't work, then they've, you know, I guess technically they probably wouldn't have lost money because I doubt they bought it at these prices anyway, but they will just be, you know, losing you know, more potential earnings. So I don't think there's going to be any massive pullbacks at any time soon. It's not to say never. I think at some stage there will definitely be, you know, once it gets to the certain price where people are happy that, look, if I get it wrong, uh, I will lose some money, but that's all it'll be is just a little bit of money. They won't be losing, you know, sort of mass amounts of Bitcoin. So for instance, like MicroStrategy, you know, they bought in around sort of $9,000 uh, on sort of average, I think they said 9,100, 9,200. I think it was 8,900 through to 9,200 was their average price range for buying into Bitcoin. They're probably unlikely to try and manipulate the market until that's at around about, oh, let's just round it off and say 100,000. It could happen earlier or it could happen later because at that point, if they lose a bit of Bitcoin, it's no big deal. Whereas now, if they try to manipulate the market, they would have to sell a fair amount of Bitcoin and it's highly likely that they wouldn't be able to manipulate it enough. It'd just simply be bought up. There's going to be almost no one panic selling uh, Bitcoin right now. And those who do, well, you know, you can't help those people. I think the institutional money that's uh, getting in now and is especially going to start to get in once we get over this $13,800 level that along with the retail we're going to move very very fast and again i was thinking you know we might not see a hundred thousand you know i change my mind every day at the moment it's hard to know you know at times like this when i see how much bitcoin is really starting to move now and you know again paypal getting in and just other other big institutional buyers coming out and you know saying all of a sudden yet yeah, we've bought some bitcoin and again paul tudor jones uh being bullish on bitcoin i think this is the one this is the cycle where it does reach mainstream i mean it already sort of is with paypal but i mean that it really does just get mass adopted i don't think bitcoin is really going to be used as a form of payment i think it is definitely going to be a store of wealth but it's not to say people won't ever buy stuff with Bitcoin because look, some some people will in certain areas, but I think more a store of wealth is what it's going to be. And people are just going to be putting their money into Bitcoin and yeah, maybe a hundred thousand is gonna be really a low target for what the height of this run could be. You know, maybe a half a million dollar Bitcoin, who knows? Yeah, it's just too hard to know. It will really depend how much institutional money gets in Again, no one will want to be last and maybe they'll all pile in uh, and maybe in this one, only some of them sort of pile in and the ones who are a little bit too late, they simply hold off and do their research and go, right, I'll wait for the next bear market. But, you know, at the moment, I think the bottom of the next bear market, I don't even think it'll come down to our old all-time high. So I think 20,000 uh, will still be sort of cheap Bitcoin uh, in the grand scheme of things. But you know that narrative may change i'll just have to wait and see but just the feeling i'm getting from the market at the moment and all these big players getting in again big players aren't going to get into this stuff if they think it's way oversold or overpriced they're only going to want to get into it if they think it's cheap and you know a good buy i.e basically a steal and that's what's still happening at the moment and again grayscale just the last seven days up until the 21st anyway they put another billion dollars into cryptocurrencies, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic. So they still think that it is absolutely dirt cheap. And I mean, look, they sell it uh, at an absolute premium anyway, but there's still people that are happy to pay basically twice as much as what it's worth to Grayscale on that to uh, take custody of it. And again, even they are somewhat considered the smart money. So if they're still piling in at the moment, it makes me think, that the uh, you know the peak of it, it's hard to know exactly where it'll be, but I don't think the the cycle low of the next bear market is going to come down to where we are. So I think it's still going to be above fifteen thousand. I don't even think we'll come back down and touch this old uh, all time high of twenty thousand. But you know who knows? I could be wrong. All right, let's just quickly go have a look at the markets. Were there any big losers? 
well, we'll go winners first, all right? Elrond making a good move. Ocean Protocol doing all right. Yearn Finance uh, finally making uh, a bit of a move up, which is good for them. They uh, definitely went down a lot from where they were. I think that was 34,000, 40,000, and it's down to 15,000. Crypto.com, you know, good 24 hours for them, but they still really have just... Uh, tumbled and come down quite a ways and we'll have to see uh, whether that lasts chain link so again starting to creep its way back up so anyone who panic sold their chain link you know maybe that wasn't the smartest thing to do but you know again none of what i say is financial advice it's just my personal opinion i bought some more chain link uh a little while ago uh, and it went down a little bit I didn't worry because when it went down a little bit more after that, I just bought some more. And so the last lot of chain link I bought, I think I'm uh, up by only a couple of percent. And it's probably really around about this, maybe only up by four or five percent. The other chain link that I bought just before that, I think that was down by about seven or eight percent. So again, I'm not worried. I believe in chain link. You know, there's talk that chain link's going to go to two hundred dollars a coin uh, at the cycle high. Well, if you're picking it up for twelve dollars and it's going to two hundred dollars, you're almost at a twenty x there. Not quite, probably more about a fifteen x. But hey, you show me somewhere else where you can fifteen x your money, uh, and <laughs> I'll get onto it. So I still think Chainlink's a really good buy at this price. And we can see there's a couple other movers. Hedera Hashgraph, uh, that's good. No, nothing major, but it, again. It's the weekend, so nothing's really pumping, but you know, there's a couple of good ones here. But again, with these, I would be watching for these to have a bit of a pullback on Sunday or Monday. Let's see if there are any really big losers, though, and probably, uh, what's that, Filecoin? Uh, probably hasn't done so well. Uh, nope, there we go. Only kind of small pullback, so uh, Blockstack, that's a shame. Uh, I got my bag of Blockstack, hasn't been doing too good hasn't been doing too bad either but you know the fact that it's coming down again uh, is not great but again over you know seven days 10 percent down is not really too bad at all considering we were in a bit of a bear market until recently and all the rest they're just single digit losses so really if you can't handle a single digit loss then you're really going to uh, struggle when it comes to double digit losses uh, and triple digit gains you know it'll all be too much for you all right so that's it from me. Saturday's here. Saturday's uh, starting to disappear here in Australia. But stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train or at least just kind of, you know, stay in afloat. And I'll see you next time.